quiet, soft steps and a careful eye, Gordon McDonald sneaks up on nature. That was a pretty fast one. Gordon is a snake enthusiast and believes that our local snakes don't deserve the bad rap that often comes with being a slithering reptile. Snakes have always been portrayed as evil and you know, bad and things like that, but uh, even as a kid growing up, I always had an interest in them. And since we moved to the island a few years ago, I've been lucky to find this place where there's just hundreds of snakes. There's nothing really bad or dangerous about them here anyhow. This small area near both Buttertub's Marsh and the highway is full of snakes during the warmer seasons and the rock-faced hill acts as a hibernaculum for them during the cold. It's pretty typical of a snake den. In the springtime, as the snakes will come out for a little while and they'll go out and forage around, maybe get something to eat and then uh, if its temperature starts to drop or we get a late season snowstorm or frost or something like that, the snakes will work their way back into the side hill and. They just go in the rocks and cracks and deep enough just to get away from the frost. And now that spring has come, the snakes are out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they're not moving very fast today. It's a little, little cloud cover. It's made it pretty cool, but uh, actually this one here looks like a pregnant female. Gordon says that garter snakes are unique in that they give birth to live young. And there are three types of garter snake in the Central Island area. The most common is the Northwestern garter snake, and then there's the common garter snake and the Western terrestrial garter snake. The snakes in this field are the Northwesterns. Northwestern is the smallest of the three species, and but it's also the most brilliantly colored. So this is a pretty common color for the Northwestern, sort of a light olive brown with a, a light greeny yellow stripe on it. You see the light green on the top of the head there, that's a pretty distinguishing marking for the northwestern garter snake. A lot of times in the warmer weather they, they're quite feisty and they don't want to stay in your hands very long, but on the colder days they don't mind a little uh, handling. you notice that uh, this guy here has a, a blue sort of a cloudiness to his eye and that's a signal that he's getting ready to shed, so his eyesight right now is actually compromised. Garter snakes uh, shed their skin once or twice a year. If you look uh, closely here, you can just see where the eyes and the mouth and uh, where he started to shed off right from the face. Basically, we have a whole snake here, and uh, this is uh, very rare to find this in one piece. Oh, there. Whoa. We stumbled upon this a couple of years ago, so I'll bring the kids and their friends down and, and catch some snakes and just let them handle them and see that they're really not the dangerous creatures that people portray them to be. As we finish our mini snake expedition, Gordon has one request of everyone. Like if you know where we're at and you end up coming out here, please uh, just be careful when you're picking the snakes up and, and leave them here. Garter snakes are not very good to keep as pets. They don't tend to live very long, so it's better that you just come out and enjoy them here and then go, let them go again. Here. In Nanaimo, for Shaw TV Channel 4, I'm Derek Johnstone.